Thank you, Chairman Cornyn, Ranking Member Durbin, and members of the subcommittee for the opportunity to testify on this important topic of timely testing of sexual assault evidence. We know that sexual assault is occurring at epidemic levels. In the United States, nearly one in five women will be raped during their lifetime. Sexual assault is too often a reality and a persistent threat in our homes, our neighborhoods, on college campuses, on military bases, and on tribal lands. But in contrast to the disturbingly large number of women sexually assaulted is the distressingly low number of women who report it. Studies indicate reporting ranges from 10 to at most 35%. And in Illinois, the latest numbers reveal that less than 15% of reported rapes result in arrests. We know the main reason that women don't report rape is that they don't believe their crime will be taken seriously. And these unconscionably low numbers justify their concerns. But recently, survivors and their advocates have demanded that legislators and law enforcement focus on the horrific failure of our criminal justice system to prevent and properly respond to sexual assault. The failure of police to process rape kits is indicative of the overall problem. Five years ago, Human Rights Watch investigated unsubmitted rape kits in Illinois. Based on the police departments that responded, HRW determined that of 7,494 rape kits collected, only 1,474 could be confirmed as tested. In response to these shocking findings, I drafted and worked to pass the Sexual Assault Evidence Submission Act. As you've heard, this was the first state law of its kind in the country. It required two things. First, the identification and testing of previously unsubmitted rape kits, and second, the creation of a statewide protocol to submit new rape kits to the crime lab within 10 days. This law resulted in the testing of over 4,000 previously unsubmitted kits. The results, 969 matches in the Federal CODIS database. This massive failure to test rape kits resulted in the criminal justice system failing to protect public safety and failing to provide justice for sexual assault survivors. So how do we ensure that rape kits are properly collected, submitted, and tested in a timely manner? Currently, I am co-chairing a sexual assault working group in Illinois comprised of law enforcement, prosecutors, forensic scientists, and advocates to identify the barriers that prevent the efficient reporting, investigation, and prosecution of sexual assault cases. From what we've learned, I propose the following. First, all states should have a law that requires all rape kits be submitted for testing. Second, we must institute mechanisms to ensure that police comply with the law and submit all rape kits for analysis. We can require tracking systems to ensure accountability and satisfy chain of custody concerns. Third, forensic labs need sufficient funding and resources to test all the evidence they receive. Fourth, labs should undertake efficiency reviews. But those measures are not enough. We must also recognize and rectify the other significant barriers that prevent sexual assaults from being investigated and prosecuted. The most important change necessary for successful sexual assault investigations and prosecutions is proper training for law enforcement and prosecutors. The fact is that often rape kits are unsubmitted for testing because of a blame the victim mentality or because investigators mistrust the survivor's story. I've learned that too often police avoid testing rape kits by unilaterally deciding not to pursue an investigation. In fact, at a recent summit I held on campus sexual assault, a police officer stated that he learned at the police academy that 80% of sexual assault allegations are false. It is also critical that trained sexual assault nurse examiners are available to all victims of sexual assault, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SANES dramatically improve the collection of evidence and provide a compassionate response to the victim. In Illinois, my office has trained over 1,200 SANES, but there are only three hospitals that I know of that have 24-7 SANE programs. It's clear that our country's culture surrounding sexual assault and law enforcement's response to it must change. We must support survivors from the moment they report their crime or offenders will never be held accountable. The United States is still a long way from assuring the safety of women and girls, boys and men, from sexual assault and its traumatic aftermath. I thank the committee for this opportunity to testify, and I welcome your questions.